We watched AEW Rampage, October 29th, 2021. We opened with a tournament match between Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston. So ordinarily at this point in the so show. funny, Craig. This match. It was, was funny? It, no. It actually it just, was funny how it, great it was. It makes me smile, and it almost... It was so hard hitting and at times uncomfortable to watch. The nervousness in me just made me giggle. You know what I'm saying? So this match was awesome. Yeah. At this point in the show, here at the very beginning, we typically uh, I go into detail about some of the things I liked in this match, and specific moments or spots or storylines or or whatever, or a great finish. I'm gonna do all that, but I want to open just with the reflection of this Brian Danielson fella. His first match in this company was, uh, let me double check this date here, uh, September 29th against Kenny Omega. Debut, that was his first match on the, uh, on the, uh, on the Dynamite. I think I had that right. But anyway, it, uh, it's five weeks later, and this, uh, this here match for Rampage was taped, taped on October 27th. That's five weeks later. He has had, in those five weeks, a great match with Kenny Omega. He had a great match with Nick Jackson. He had a great match with Minoru Suzuki. He had a great match with Bobby Fish. He had a great match with Dustin Rhodes. And now here he is with a great match against Eddie Kingston. Are you surprised, Vinny? In a way, yes. No. You know what the problem is? As we've been talking about for the last 30 years now, he worked in a place that is not a wrestling company. Hmm. Yeah, but before that... Dude. He worked in lots of places that were wrestling companies. Yeah, and you know what? When he worked in those places, he won Best Technical Wrestler so many times that the, the fucking category is named after him in The Observer. Realize that, Then Brian. he goes to WWE, and he loses every year to Zack Sabre Jr. I realize that, Brian. Now he's back here. He's had five matches, and guess what? He's going to beat Zack Sabre Jr. in his own fucking category. He's going to win the category. He's, he's mentioned yes. this, by the way. He wants a match with Zack to, to prove it. He, he, yeah, he doesn't need a match with Zack to prove it. He just has to wrestle on Rampage no. every week. And Dynamite. Whatever. This fucking but, yeah, guy this is, is incredible. Like, he's one of the best I've ever seen, and his September into October is one of the best runs I've ever seen by anyone ever. That's the point I'm trying to make, Brian. I am surprised that Brian Danielson got better when he got to AEW. But Vinny, I don't think he got better. <laughs> what he was was he was like really, Listen. really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. And then he was in a place that didn't allow him to be awesome. But he still watched wrestling all over the world. And he had all sorts of things that he went to sleep at night. And these were these sugar plums dancing in his head. The sugar plums were kick fuckers hard as I can. <laughs> chop them into oblivion. Get beaten senseless. This is what he dreamed about at night. And then he had to go Christmas to Raw, ever. and they were like, oh, fucking don't hit him so hard. Oh, lay it in, but not really. All this other shit. And then he leaves, and the first fucking thing that he gets to do is everything he's been wanting to do. Because that's how good he is. This is what he's been the whole time. I will never look at the Nutcracker the same way again. You shouldn't. He's, he'd been there cracking nuts if he could have. Whole new dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy And yes, it's on. true. This person here notes this is John Moxley's favorite wrestling match he has ever seen. His favorite match he's ever seen. Well, it was awfully great. Do you know how many matches that John Moxley has seen? A bunch. He's seen WWE matches and New Japan and Stardom matches and matches from All Japan and, and Terry Funk and matches all of this. This is his favorite match he's ever seen in his life. Dragon Gate. Historic Dragon Gate. Combat Zone. Yes. This was a fantastic match. It was... Yeah. Glorious violence. It was a fight. It was a fight. There's no doubt about that. Fight, capital F, capital I, capital G, capital H, capital T. Fight. It's a fight between two men who love pro wrestling with commentary by men who also love pro wrestling. We had references on commentary in this match to Royal Road style and the over-the-shoulder arm ringer that was not just the Memphis water pump spot, as Jericho put it. So, Eddie is just brutalizing Danielson. Partly, it helps that uh, Danielson's skin is particularly brutalizable. He bruises easily and gets those welts showing up, a benefit of being pale. But they're just, just wailing on each other and wailing on each other. And there is a long top rope battle where it appears Eddie is going to suplex Brian. And somehow, Brian reverses it to a suplex of Eddie. I'm still not totally sure how, but it was great. Brian poses or uh, preps for the knee strike, and Eddie avoids it by simply collapsing into a heap. And Brian hesitates for that long, and then just lays in elbows on the ground and hooks in an armbar. 
They're just beating the fuck out of each other, and he kills him to death with a back fist. He, he's exhausted and beaten to hell by this point, so he's, he's late making the cover. And by the time he gets over there, Brian's able to turn the cover into a triangle choke, and Eddie gives him the middle finger of death. But that's all he can do. He passes out because he is beaten. Finish of this match in some ways was, was actually, it was like, it was so preposterous that I loved it. Literally, he got caught because he crawled over into Brian Danielson's guard. Mm-hmm. A foolish error by Eddie Kingston. There's a hole in his game. Brian's a and he more was, complete wrestler. He was defeated. And uh, this match did not go 30 minutes, and so I don't think it's going to get the big five in the Observer from Dave. Uh, but I do believe that... It's not the rule, but I'm just telling you, that's what I think. Hmm. But I, I do believe that I enjoyed this match more than I enjoyed uh, Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega. And probably any other really? Brian Danielson match. Oh, yes. Oh. That match was fat day. Don't get me wrong. Don't get, and, th- and that match probably, honestly, here's the thing. If I had to rate both matches, I would not rate this one as highly as the other one because the other one was a 30-minute draw and all action for 30 minutes, and this got maybe 12 on television. But as far as enjoying the match, which one would I immediately go back and watch a second time? It would be this match here. Okay. All-timer, I thought. This was a just a fucking classic match. And it was funny because we got the reports from the people that watch it live, and they were like, oh, man, Danielson got chopped so badly that his, his chest was just, it was bleeding. Like, you should see these chops. And don't get me wrong, Eddie chopped him hard, but uh, the issue was not the chops. The issue is uh, Brian Danielson's skin. Yeah. He has, he has very, he's very... Uh, he's he, brutalizable. He's like a grape. <laughs> he's, he's I'm got saying. To, him and Steven Regal have the Yeah, thing. you barely touch it in it. It, uh... Yeah, but it was awesome. Yeah. This match was great. Yeah, this match was awesome. I did actually look and see the last time they faced off was back in Chikara in 2010. Wow, I would not have guessed actually they would have fought anywhere. So because I'm an um, idiot. Well, this this match was just absolutely fantastic. My my wife actually left the room. She was uncomfortable because it was too me. violent. Yeah. Oh Lord, well, come on. What, that's what she said on the way out. Actually. Wow. Anyway. No, it was. It Does she was not fit. appreciate violence? No. Hmm. No, she doesn't. Well, then she should have left. I thought this was one of the greatest dynamite matches, or not dynamite, but AEW mm-hmm. television matches we've ever seen. And uh, I think the best match I've ever seen on Rampage. It's funny because every time you see a new match come up, you, you think, well, how are these two going to pan out? How are the style differences going to. And it always works out. So I cannot wait to see Eddie Kingston and CM Punk because the styles, even though they might clash on paper or, or you might at first glance think these styles might clash. No, this match was fantastic. I love it. So afterwards, actually during the break, in fact, Danielson did offer a handshake, but a furious Eddie Kingston declined. Furious and upset and shame Eddie Kingston. Yeah, Eddie Kingston was super popular. It wasn't uh, as evident on TV as it was live. And I had people say, "Oh my God, it would be a horrible idea to turn this guy, to turn this guy heel." And maybe it would be, but all I know is I watched this show, and sure as shit, seemed like this guy's going to be turning heel. Mm-hmm. And I think John Moxley is turning heel. And I do not expect John Moxley to beat Hangman Page for the AW title imminently. So if he wins his tournament and does not win the title at full gear, he's going to need something to do. And that's something to do should be teaming with Eddie Kingston to win the AEW World Tag Team titles as a ass-kicking heel motherfucker team. There you go. The heel motherfucker would just be the greatest say. name for a team. <laughs> HMFs. Yes. Just like MSK. No one knows what it means. I know what HMFs mean. HMF is just heel motherfuckers. Team. CM Punk versus Garcia. Fast-moving, neckbreaker. Leg sub hold on. I got a P. P gets leg. <laughs> 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 this was ten and eight twenty one. Close line. <laughs> Pillman punches back and forth. How'd Pillman get in this match? <laughs> I don't know. How What's happening? It? If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.